Did D'Amico Ryan's hint at what went wrong with Damian Pierce's 2023 season? Can the Texans fix it? And what would it mean if they do? Lots of questions. I got the answers for you. Welcome into the channel. I'm Cody Stutes. Let's talk some Texans. Let's talk about Damian Pierce, the third year running back who, as a rookie, was one of the lone bright spots in a really crappy season of Texans football. He was a very fun player and a productive player, and there were high hopes for what Pierce was going to bring to the table last season. And ultimately, it didn't go very well. It started rough for Damian Pierce. It didn't get better. And by the end of the season, after he started the year as running back number one, he could barely get on the field even in a special teams capacity late in the year. D'Amico Ryans talked about Damian Pierce after OTAs, and he kind of gave a little hint. Listen closely. He gave a little hint on what might have went wrong with Damian Pierce's 2023 season. What I've seen from Damian this offseason, it's a guy who's put in the work. As you mentioned, he's changed his body. Right, He's strong. He's been working out every day of the offseason program. Uh, Damian, not only here, just working out. Man, I'm proud of Damian for him going back and finishing his uh, his degree at Florida. So, I mean, just a complete man, just working out as a football player, but also finishing that degree means a lot to him. And I, I see Damian having a very clear headspace as we're out working, and I think that will allow him to have a, a really productive year this year. Uh, and he has the two, he has everything it takes right, to be a really good running back for us. And I think having him and Joe as a one-two punch would be very beneficial for us all. He has everything it takes to be a really productive running back for the Texans. That's great to hear. Fantastic. D'Amico Ryans basically says he's the change of pace back. He's the number two to Joe Mixon's number one if he gets it. But to me, the thing that jumped off the page that D'Amico Ryans talked about, that was one of the key factors about Damian Pierce's 2023 season is between the ears. He talked about the clear headspace that Damian Pierce now has for this team. Well, the clear headspace to me is one of the biggest elements heading into 2024. I want to go back to the early part of 2023, talking with Damian Pierce in the locker room. And we'll play the clip here in just a second. But to set it up, he was talking about how he would get to the facility hours early more than all the other running backs, and work with running backs coach Danny Barrett. He calls him DB in the clip. He worked with running backs coach Danny Barrett about figuring things out, fine-tuning things. Now, this is after the season has already started. After, in training camp, D D Damian Pierce said that the offense and the offensive playbook was like the Bible from a size standpoint. So you know there was a lot for him to process, a lot for him to take in. The success wasn't there early on in the season. and again. D'Amico Ryans talks about that clear headspace heading into this year. Listen to Damian Pierce last year. Listen to all the different things, again, with the setup, knowing that he gets to the facility hours before other running backs, is working nonstop with the running backs coach, Danny Barrett. Listen to him just talk a couple of days before they go out and play a game. Look at how many different directions and how many things are going through Damian Pierce's mind when he's talking about playing running back. Like every week, you know, me and DB, we got plenty of time together. We, got, we probably have hours before the other running backs come in because they be in special teams doing treatment, doing all this, you know. So me and DB always steal a lot of reps. We steal a lot of film. And, you know, it comes down to me. He's like, he doesn't want to slow me down because that's how I play. Like, because that, that's one thing I like about DB. He, he keeps me within the framework of my game, but also within the framework of his offense and what they're asking of me. So, you know, they both of them mess together, and, you know go with each other rather than, you know, I'm going too fast, I'm hurting this play or, you know what I'm saying? So just trying to find, like, so that balance for me was just taking, literally taking half a step back, you know, from last week. So this week you might see me a little deeper, you know what I'm saying? So, and, you know, and, and we saw that when I was, you know, deeper as opposed to closer, you know, I naturally feel the cut anyway as, as opposed to being like, oh, DP, oh, this cut, you know, we might cut tonight. Nah, like, I was finding it regardless. It was just the time it was like a half of a second off or, a split second too early or you know what i'm saying we'll mess up in the fit or something but like like i said you know we're making strides in that department making strides in that department is what he said after he said they get in early they get extra reps he doesn't do special teams work because he works with the running back coach while they're away he's worried about where he's set up he's worried about naturally feeling the cuts within the offense meshing his style of running with the way that the offense works i mean there was just a lot going on 
with Damian Pierce between the ears last year. And I feel like eventually it caught up with him. There were a couple of moments in the 2023 season where it just didn't click when he had the opportunity. And yes, the offensive line issues where they constantly were moving guys around. They didn't get great play out of the left guard spot. It took till Juice Scruggs got there to really kind of settle things down. Jared Patterson started well. He got hurt. They were on backup after backup after backup at various spots. Like It was a, 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 a musical chairs act on the offensive line. But Damian Pierce wasn't executing the offense. He talked about it there in that clip. He was going too fast, or he was ruining the play because he got to the hole too soon, or he didn't feel the cutback lane, or he didn't know that there were multiple things they needed to do or didn't execute multiple things they needed to do with the certain cut or the play that was called. And you could see it. You could see him just go back to the style, the type of offense where it was downhill. Uh, you don't have to think, make the move, get downhill. There's not a lot of processing, understanding what things go on. That's what they did in 2022 with him, and he was productive to a large degree. In 2023, there's a little bit more learning, the patience that he talked about. He needs a little bit more of that patience. And I feel like Atlanta is one of those games followed up with a couple of the games after that in New Orleans and Carolina, I feel like those games are the ones that really kind of epitomize some of the troubles and some of the struggles. You go back and you watch Atlanta. You watch the Falcons game with Damian Pierce. He carried the ball 20 times, and they didn't throw the ball enough in that game. They settled for a lot of field goals in that game, in large part because the rushing attack couldn't get going. And he only averaged 3.3 yards a carry. And then he followed that up with 2.62 yards per carry in a really close Saints game. I know the Texans won that game, but it was close pretty much the whole way through. And so the execution wasn't there. D'Amico Ryans talks about the clear headspace. Man, if he is just calm, understands the offense a little more, isn't putting as much pressure on himself because he knows he's not running back one. He doesn't have to be the leader in the rushing attack. The offensive line's maybe going to be a bit more stable, so there's less pressure there to make up for the offensive line moving pieces and things like that. Plus, you can watch Joe Mixon execute at a high level in this offense. He's got some familiarity on the offshoot of a Shanahan-style offense with what they did in Cincinnati. Damian Pierce can kind of take a deep breath. Now, look, Jawar Jordan's behind him. Dare Agumbawale's behind him. Uh, British Brooks is behind him. A couple of other names, okay? Those guys are behind him. D'Amico Ryan's talked about it there in that clip we played a moment ago. He's got everything that he needs to be successful and productive for the Houston Texans. And with the changing of his body a little bit, slimming down, trimming up, maybe adds to the agility a little bit, maybe adds to the quickness a little bit, able to make some decisions a little bit faster as he starts to see things. It seems like it could be something that builds on itself for the 2024 season, and Damian Pierce becomes a productive player for this team. Now, look, the Texans still have some belief in Damian Pierce. Yes, they went out and got a brand-new starter, but they didn't go get a brand-new backup. They didn't go get a bunch of significant challengers for Damian Pierce's roster spot. A sixth-round investment in Jawar Jordan is not Damian Pierce is getting replaced. A undrafted free agent in British Brooks is not Damian Pierce is getting replaced. So there's still a hope from the Houston Texans that Pierce can recapture some of what he did in 2022, can erase some of the bad in 2023, and be a productive player this upcoming season. Joe Mixon cannot be an 80%, 90% carry guy. He's going to need players to spell him. He's going to need guys that the Texans can trust to put out there on the field. If it's third down, you want to throw Daria Gumbawale out there because Joe Mixon has carried it on first and second down. It's maybe the third or fourth set of downs that drive. I'm totally understand that. An underrated aspect that went positive for Damian Pierce in 2023 is he caught the ball better last year than he did in 2022, his rookie season. That's something that went better. And looking at him on OTAs the other day, he looked really good catching the ball out of the backfield. If he's going to be a change of pace and a spell back, for Joe Mixon, he's going to have to obviously execute the offense better than he did last year, but he's going to have to be able to catch the football as well. This is a team that's going to ask their running backs to catch the football from time to time, and that was something that went positive for Pierce in 2023 amid a really disappointing season. So if he clicks 
and turns into the running back two that this team needs, then they have a one-two punch. If Damian Pierce is rookie year Damian Pierce with Joe Mixon, that's a really good running back tandem. It's not the best running back tandem in football. It's better than a lot of teams running back tandem. If Damian Pierce can play to the same level that he played as a rookie and can erase that 2023 season. If he doesn't, well, that's why Gerard Jordan's here. That's why Daria Gumbawale is here. And I don't know that it's cut Damian Pierce if he doesn't get it figured out in the first couple of days, but there could be other contenders for the job that the Texans would bring in. Maybe when cut down time happens, there's a player that's familiar with the style of offense. Nick Casario has never been afraid to use a late round pick to add a guy once training camp gets going. So it's not easy for Damian Pierce, but the way D'Amico Ryan's talked about him, the way that he's changed his body, and hopefully with the conversation that he had late in the season on Texans radio in a post game, where he talked about this is the hardest season of football he's ever had. He's got to make sure that he can learn some of the intricacies of this thing, put in a lot of work. Miko Ryan said it. He's put in all the work that they have asked of him this offseason. Now it's time, OTAs, a little bit of a break, training camp for that work to pay off for Damian Pierce. If it does, he's going to make the team. He's going to be running back two. He's going to be a pretty good running back two, and the Texans will have a pretty nice one-two punch when it comes to that running back situation. If he doesn't, well, then Damian Pierce, his incredible personality, the big smile, and the physical style of play will be playing for somebody else. Maybe it's another team that's more in tune with the style of running that he has, and uh, he's getting the opportunity there if it doesn't work out here in Houston. I'm not rooting for the latter. I'm rooting for the former. Uh, I like Damian Pierce. He is a fun guy to talk to, and I'm rooting for his success. And if he is successful, the Texans will be in a pretty darn good spot. And if not, well, I don't love the fact that it could be Daria Gumbawale at running back two or rookie Jamar Jordan at running back two, but that's something. Uh, what, are the old saying? what is the old saying? We'll cross that bridge when we get there. Well, for the Texans, they'll cross that bridge if they get there. They won't get there if Damian Pierce takes care of his business. What say you? You think Damian Pierce is bouncing back this year? What does productive look like for Damian Pierce in 2024? Let me know in the comment section down below. If you have the new setup on YouTube, the new layout, the comment section is over there. So it's over on the side. It's not down below. Wherever the comment section is, I want you to be in the comment section. Wherever the thumbs up is, I want you to give me a thumbs up on the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You don't want to miss anything that comes your way here on the channel. I appreciate you watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I can't wait until we talk Texans again soon.